In this episode of Content Minded, Michael Thomas of Sharon and Will Wheelwright, two very good friends of mine and very insightful men and commentators on this topic, join me to discuss the growing, burgeoning, Catholic back to the land movement. We talk about the sacredness of the landscape, of what it means as a spiritual practice to cultivate the land, to nourish ourselves. We talk about ecology, various right-wing movements, and the potential disagreements that Catholics have with other groups, as well as the position of Catholicism towards the American heartland and the fabric of America itself, and what it means to express an ecological awareness within Catholic social teachings. This episode is one of my deepest and one of my best. And so thank you for joining us to discuss these important things. This episode has reaffirmed my statement that the pursuit of good content is in fact a spiritual mission. Yeah, so please, oh, that's another thing, no fed. Yeah, try not to fed post it for you too. We're also gonna have a, a huge job editing out, you know, swear words. And, yeah, it's a miracle that I get monetized, so I don't wanna like risk it. Um, but we, I have on Content Minded two very important, exciting guests. Um, and we are here talking about the uh, Catholic Back to the Land movement. But I also want to talk about environmentalism and I, I guess inevitably the place of Catholicism in American life. Because I am with two Americans. And uh, I, I feel that that's always a, a worthy topic. So really quickly, because I, when I go into a rant mode, I always get you know I, I i tend not to i tend to ignore the introductions so michael thomas of sharon please go first um who are you what do you do um i was listening to some of your stuff i was reading this very excellent review of your work and your movement in tablet magazine uh so just briefly really quickly for the audience so yes who is michael thomas of sharon? <laughs> um well i'm a uh... Father, five, a husband, Catholic. I live in upstate New York. Um, I've been kind of moving increasingly towards, uh, you know, full. Uh, I, I don't like the word self sufficiency, but but I do like small scale homesteading, and I've been doing it for about a decade now. Um, I also nice. make cider, um, so I have like a cider orchard here that's kind of. You know, like right on the cusp, but like between commercial and regular. And then, um, and then, uh, I'm glad that you guys read that tablet article. Was, they they did a pretty decent job. But I'm also part of a group of people who are trying to um, have a, a resurgence or a restoration of the Catholic land movement, mostly centered around the work of the English distributists um, from you know way way back pre-war. So. Um, so that's, yeah, that's like a, a brief synopsis of who I am. Excellent, excellent. And uh, yeah, because upstate New York is part of the fruit belt, right, is, if I recall. Oh, um, yeah, we got, yeah, we got yeah. lots of apples and yeah, all, all that stuff. Yep, you got it. Yeah, because here in the in the Niagara portion of the, the Ontario, southern Ontario part of the fruit belt, that's a huge issue with uh, – these uh, these rats from Toronto. No, I'm kidding. I'm I'm not fed posting. <laughs> these people from Toronto that moved down and they're building uh, condos and they're destroying a lot of the primary farm land that can sustain fruit in in a more northern climate for land development. And I feel really bad that my come from a concrete background, construction background, and uh, unfortunately my old man helps contribute to a lot of those townhouses being built. But uh, what what are you gonna do, right? Um, but I do, I do think that, uh, when it comes to the particular climate and the environment that we live in, I mean, it's, it's, it's very unique uh, and it should be preserved. And I, I just really hate people moving here from Toronto. I hate to say, like, you know, but, uh, <laughs> and then of course we have, um, my good friend, Will, who needs little introduction or no introduction, but please, my friend, 
Uh, tell us about yourself. You are also a homesteader. You're also a writer. Um, enervating bug men on Twitter for a few years now. And, <laughs> um, and uh, so yeah, maybe a brief synopsis about who you are as well. Sure. Um, thanks for having thanks for having us on, Gio. And you were um, recently on Bronze Age Perverts uh, Caribbean Rhythms. That's I, another. I recently athlete, peaked so. in life, uh, but uh, with my appearance on uh, Caribbean Rhythms, uh, so that's a very proud moment for me. But um, uh, let's see, who am I? I am a, a farmer, homesteader, writer, thinker, a Catholic as well. Uh, similar, quite quite similar profile to to Michael. Really, we're we're we're. We're spiritual brothers, um, and uh, we have a, we we share we share a lot in terms of our outlook. Um, and I'm sure we'll, as I'm sure this the rest of this podcast will unveil. Um, but yeah, I think uh, I don't know what else can I say. I, you know, I, I enjoy I enjoy growing things uh, in general, um, uh, you know, ra- raising livestock, gardening, orcharding, growing mushrooms. Uh, I enjoy building things. I enjoy. Um, you know the the act of creation. Uh, this is uh, this is what inspires me, and uh, and pr- I guess um, on on the most broad level uh, forms some part of my identity. So uh, that's the yeah. best I can do. That's great. Um, well, according to George Bombia, you two shouldn't exist anymore. That we should all be uh, <laughs> having. Um, we should be imbibing in uh, mass produced factory uh, slop mm-hmm. that will give us the proper amount of calories in a neoliberal uh, mass individual <laughs> u- dystopia. But I um, heard if I had enough social credits, I, I heard I could like eat the flesh of celebrities grown in PC. <laughs> <laughs> but see, you know what's funny? The Cr- Cronenberg son made that amazing film called, uh, what was it called? Antiviral? Um, where it was exactly that. You get to imbibe in the flesh of uh, celebrities. And I wonder mm-hmm. if, like, uh, as our good friend Zero HP Lovecraft says, I wonder if in the future we get to eat um, the the flesh of e girls. So that could be something. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, <laughs> starting off great, starting off great. Um, oh man, but let let's get into it. Um, so, for to begin with, I think maybe we shall talk about um, the the aspect of the particular history of Catholicism in relation to the back to the land movement, because back to the land, usually when people think of it, and as pointed out in the tablet magazine article is usually a hippie thing. It's something that the real hardcore die in the wool hippies, the ones that didn't sell out and become yuppies, that they actually lived their principles and they, you know, a lot of them were in, they were in upstate New York and a lot of them were in the sticks of California. Uh, A lot of them, you know, went, around to these areas that could support these, you know, quasi commune esque farming. And I wonder what is the history of the back to land movement specifically when it comes to this Catholic element. And I maybe like if, if you shall, uh, if you don't, if you too feel comfortable, do you, are you two cradle Catholics or did you have a sort of a conversion story or did you come back to Catholicism? So what is your particular relations to Catholicism? Whoever wants to go first. I'll let Michael take that one to start uh, off. Um, all right. So a couple different parts of that question. I'm going to go with the me part first, which is I'm a cradle Catholic, um, big Italian family. Same here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, my, my mom's like Irish or Scandinavian, not something or other, but, um, but my whole dad's side of the family is just big, big Italian family. And, um, and so Catholic, you know, grandma praying rosaries and, and, um, and, uh, you know, that kind of thing. My parents kind of fell into the boom, the, like, you know, the, 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 the sixties materialism generation, mm-hmm. kind of like the, the, latent cultural like um uh oh thanks honey sorry my wife's putting dinner on the table right now hi Edie. very uh, trad yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um so so thank you jenny <laughs> um so where were we uh yeah so i grew up very catholic um with my grandma and stuff but my parents weren't like they completely abandoned it um it was mm. only was only like in form 
um, it was like a cultural form. So a lot of like the C and E's, you know, like, like Christmas yeah. and yeah. Easter we went to, but outside of that, there was no acceptance of like a larger Catholic ontology or like, uh, you know, we, we weren't like reading our catechisms, but when I would go to grandma's house, she was right. So I had that element in my life. Um, and then throughout my life for a, for a while, I drifted far from the faith. Um, I think it was kind of like always latently there with me. Right. I, I, I would, yeah. as we talk more, I, I would say it's like latently everywhere um, hmm. you know, in, in, the, in, in Western, you know, Sib. but, um, but in the same kind of way, it was latent in me. And as I began to quiet myself down eventually in my, like, um, I did a lot of different things. Like I lived on, like reservations i i actually stayed with buddhists for a while i like was always kind of oh, having wow. this, this wrestling with like um a spiritual existence um and aestheticism and and various kind of like pathways like that um and then in my like i finally got a farm in my early 30s and and then that kind of grew into where i'm in now and in that process of farming and coming into contact with what is primary on the landscape um i was granted this beautiful period of like being uh, able to just like read um uh we we had some financial victories and so i was just really liberated from like the push and shove of 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 a lot of social a lot of social pressures that that uh, pe people focus on and so i i just kind of was on my farm with my kids and I would read, you know, classics and I would farm all day in close, uh, you know, in close proximity to the soil with like, you know, human scale methods. And I'd be reading things and, and, and slowly my Catholic faith emerged in me. And I won't get into all the specifics, but over a couple of years it emerged and then it emerged incredibly strongly, like the ever, you know, like, uh, William knows the word for it. Uh, the, but like the, the hocus? I forget what it's called. It's like the uh, the the uh, ever presence of like God, like witnessing God. Yokotos. Yes, yes, thank you. Um, uh, it, it emerged in my life, and it was like this undeniable thing. And then since then, uh, it was been a road. Like we started to realize, oh, we got to go back to the sacraments. So uh, trying to search for that, then discovered. You know, like we're looking to take refuge in the church and then discover like, oh, the church is even more of a mess than the secular world. <laughs> um, yeah. Oh, God. And then so so then found our way to traditionalism and traditional Catholicism over the past couple of years. Um, and uh, and it's just basically been. Uh, I have a fork. Thank you, love. Thank you for thinking of me. <laughs> um, it's my it's my two year old Edith. Um, but uh, go, go. don't come in. Though. I got to talk to people. OK, um, I love you. Uh, and so, yeah, so that's, that's kind of my story. Uh, so now we're, we have a little parish community um, that's beautiful. We found a traditional mass close by. It's like, you know, 30 minutes away. And um, I found this beautiful kind of synergy in the Catholic land movement stuff, which really speaks to uh, the, the reappearance of the faith in my life. Um, and then, um, and yeah, and so that's, you know, that's, that's the me part of the question that that was my path to Catholicism. Like I said, I could go on and on and on about it. Um, but it was no, really yeah. a, a witness and work with the soil um, that that was the first thing of being like, hey, they're like, you know, the presence of God um, and, and just kind of really seeing that and then realizing throughout antiquity, there's been many men who have wrestled with this experience that I'm not the first and then further understanding the Catholic perspectives on this and being like, Oh, I have this, I have this rich, rich history that for some reason has been abandoned or obscured um, from mm -hmm. me. And then, so I began to dig and dig and dig and then, yeah. And then Literally. And also spiritually did. Yeah, yeah. I didn't even need to do that, but yeah, you got it. <laughs> well, uh, uh, <laughs> I was going to make a mud vein reference there for the song dig, but that's amazing. That's, that's great. I think that you, you summarized, I think what, um, it, well, maybe I think for probably Generation X, but also us millennials, I'm about to turn 30 this year. I think that the sort of relation to the faith that has to overcome in some ways the lack of education from our boomer parents who were seduced into a very cafeteria Catholic or almost a, I, I, I hate to black pill, but I would say almost like a spiritually secular or atheistic relation to the faith that it's 
I hate to say it, unfortunately, us Italians, a lot of the uh, boomer generation was subject to this. And I think that your story is a great one. It's it's a great illustration. And uh, so, Will, if you have a, a personal story, I would love to hear it. And uh, then I want to address this specific um, notion of Catholicism in relation to the land itself and sort of dispelling certain uh, myths people have. So, Will, uh, <laughs> go, my friend, please. <laughs> um, I yeah. know it's very hard to top Michael there, but... You know, yeah, see, there. well, I, the only, the, my, only, um, my only solace is that we have very similar stories. I'm, I'm uh, you know, 10 or, 10 or 15 years behind him. Um, but, uh, but in terms of how our faith has, has manifested itself... Uh, itself to us as as individuals it's it's quite it's quite start uh startlingly similar actually um and uh well so for me i'll tell you more uh, you know a little bit about my background i i was raised uh anglo-catholic as the mm. episcopalians once uh, referred to themselves um so uh liturgically had had quite a um an orthodox um experience actually interesting so as as people who um know me and follow me on twitter know i'm i'm also a big fan of uh of of the traditional mass and uh and traditional catholicism not just a big fan i mean i am uh, <laughs> i attend a traditional parish and and go to the latin mass uh, at least mm. once a week every week so um and and you know interestingly for me you know having uh, during the beginning of my um foray into uh into the roman church uh gone to a novus ordo mass for a few months i was like, and then, and then discovering that a traditional mass still existed and that you could go to it and uh, it's very beautiful and, and spiritually moving. Um, I was like, wait, this traditional mass is closer, is, is, is quite close to the Episcopal, Episcopalian, ma uh, you know, church service, as they call it, that I, uh, <laughs> that I grew mm -hmm. up with. Um, uh, you know, a lot, of the, a lot of the old traditional prayers, although the Episcopal church has has gone woke and you know there's you'll you'll see pride flags flying uh from every steeple uh <laughs> this sort of thing uh and it, uh you know it's it's very much um a sort of uh i don't know like waspy uh new england liberal in the south i think it's not so, quite so bad but the episcopal church is definitely similar to the church of england itself um yeah it's uh, similar to the anglicans yeah they have yeah. that liberalism inherent yeah. yeah uh right and so so you know that's that's there, um, and I, growing up, my in my church, I was not aware of that political dynamic. I, you know, the the liturgy was was solemn and serious, and I appreciated that. And um, you know, the we had Sunday school, and I I I, I think that what I tell people is um, I was given a very solid kind of biblical literacy education, as though the point of the point of having a kind of scriptural background or understanding um is you know just like one one book among many just just like you need to know shakespeare and homer and virgil you, yeah. you need to know the bible and that's obviously uh true if you want to have any kind of uh literary um uh if you want to understand what you're reading uh if, if you're reading anything important um but in terms of the coherence between ha like what what does uh the gospel have to do with uh genesis what do Christ and uh, Our Lady have to do with Adam and Eve, and um, and and then just I think in retrospect a lot of revisionism about uh, you know in order to accommodate left wing politic political stuff uh, a lot of revisionism in the interpretation of of the New Testament um, uh, that that is just that's just quite <laughs> quite cynical I think yeah. Um, yeah and so that's what I was raised in and uh, you know we were uh, interestingly um, I think somewhat uniquely I've, I've come to realize my father was the the religious one in in between my parents and he's the one who um in, you know insisted that we go to church uh every week and we did and my mom uh you know i think most of the time the, the it, if if spirituality remains in a family it remains um through the you know it, it through the <laughs> the repository tends to be the the, the women um you know um, yeah for, for for spiritual life and and I think that's certainly, you know, Bap talks about this, uh, and that's, that's been true, um, for, for probably centuries now. Um, but in my family, that wasn't the case, uh, interestingly enough. And I think, um, that's, that's a significant factor in why I have faith at all. Cause none of my siblings are Christian or really, as far as I can tell, religious in any way. Um, 
and um, I, I've gone the opposite direction and become, <laughs> you know, d- gone deeper into what what it means to be Christian um, and 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 Catholic um, and and just I think so to continue the story I think I just you know similar to Michael uh, in my uh, late teens and early twenties uh, as a lot of people seem to do drifted away from from the faith but always had. Um, as Michael was saying, a strong sense of um, the presence of the presence of God, and specifically of, of Christ, and actually specifically, even though I wasn't raised Catholic, of um, Our Lady um, in my life, I, I just had a deep sense of um, not like that they were necessarily watching over me or, or, or something like that, but just that they were there and they mattered, and uh, there was something really powerful about them. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, you know, I. And so, and as I, after I finished college and came back to my family's farm and started working here, um, very similar to Michael, I um, just, I was talking about this on with, uh, with BAP, um, that, you know, I sort of thought in a secular way that in order to, to do what needed to be done in order to kind of restore this farm and, and make it um, a proper functional farm again, which it hadn't been for some years, that, you know, kind of earthly sources of motivation would, would suffice. Um, but that very quickly, you know, became apparent that they would not. The reality of um, work gave way to that notion. Yeah. yeah and so I, I sort of, um, I sort of sat there asking myself, especially in moments of kind of deep uh, frustration and struggle with um, the in- enormous load of, um, of work, you know, mountain of, of work that lay ahead of me. How am I going to do all this? And uh, I just became aware of the need, my need for a deeper spiritual um, source of source of uh, vitality and energy. I, and uh, I l- searched for many years and have ended up like truly and honestly finding it in in the Latin Mass and in you know traditional Catholic uh, doctrine and and theology. And um, actually, this this is a I, I would like to read quickly. Um, oh yeah, from- go ahead. I, uh, just like a quick passage from uh, the brothers, uh, brothers Karamazov. Um, Are you reading is, now? I'm reading now. Yes, uh, <laughs> but, but this is this will resonate deeply and will uh, will will enrich the the rest of the conversation. Okay, this is from uh, the uh, elders, also my part of the book. For those who know it, in my youth, I'm reading now. In my youth, long ago, nearly forty years ago, I had traveled all over Russia with Father Anfim collecting funds for our monastery. And we stayed one night on the bank of a great navigable river with some fishermen. A good looking peasant lad about 18 joined us. He had to hurry back next morning to pull a merchant's barge along the bank. I noticed him looking straight before him with clear and tender eyes. It was a bright, warm, still July night. A cool mist rose from the broad river. We could hear the plash of a fish. The birds were still, all was hushed and beautiful. Everything praying to God. Only we two were not sleeping, the lad and I, and we talked of the beauty of this world of God's and of the great mystery of it. Every blade of grass, every insect, ant, and golden bee also marvelously know their path, though they have not intelligence. They bear witness to the mystery of God and continually accomplish it themselves. I saw the dear lad's heart was moved. He told me that he loved the forest and the forest birds. He was a bird catcher knew the note of each of them, could call each bird. I know nothing better than to be in the forest, said he, though all things are good. Truly, I answered him, all things are good and fair, because all is truth. Look, said I, at the horse, that great beast that is so near to man, or the lowly pensive ox which feeds him and works for him. Look at their faces. What meekness, what devotion to man, who often beats them mercilessly. What gentleness, what confidence, and what beauty. It's touching to know that there's no sin in them, for all, all except man, is sinless, and Christ has been with them before us. Why, asked the boy, is Christ with them too? It cannot but be so, said I, since the word is for all, all creation and all creatures. Every leaf is striving to the word, singing glory to God, weeping to Christ, unconsciously accomplishing this by the mystery of their sinless life. Yonder, said I. In the forest wanders the dreadful bear, fierce and menacing, and yet innocent in it. And I told him how once a, 
how once a bear came to a great saint who had taken refuge in a tiny cell in the wood. And the great saint pitied him, went up to him without fear, and gave him a piece of bread. Go along, said he. Christ be with you. And the savage beast walked away meekly and obediently, doing no harm. And the lad was delighted that the bear had walked away without hurting the saint, and that Christ was with him too. Ah, said he, how good that is, how good and beautiful is all God's work. He sat musing softly and sweetly, I saw he understood, and he slept beside me a light and sinless sleep. May God bless youth, and I prayed for him as I went to sleep. Lord, send peace and light to thy people. So this is a, uh, I'm done reading, this is um, a passage that I recently came across as I've been rereading uh, this Dostoevsky, and uh, I found it extremely moving and it, it resonated with me deeply. I hope wow. that, that explains can in you know in better words than I could put it this uh, this connection to the land that I'm sure we'll continue to attempt to identify and uh, and uh, what would you say um, you explore know. explore yes yes well that's yeah that's that's fascinating I think that it, it really sets up I think what the first thing I wanted to talk about um, the relation to the land but specifically the Catholic faith in relation to the land. Um, you know, me being an artist, uh, doing a lot of landscape painting, especially years ago, um, I, I do feel this connection to it, you know, gardening myself as well, but you know, not nearly the same degree as you two, obviously. But I feel like there is this pervasive um, notion that within Christianity in general, but specifically Catholicism, um, when you talk about man's dominion over the earth, that, that passage in that, that you just read, from Dostoevsky about, you know, they were, Christ was with them before us, was with the earth, was with the, the sort of creatures that walk the earth. Mm -hmm. But the notion that I notice, it seems to be almost like universal in terms of it being applicable to the left and right. Cause like the leftoid, like environmentalist people, they have their own like critique of Christianity. And of course it stems from I wouldn't say a lot of them. I wouldn't say a lot of deep ecologists that are like this, but I'm talking specifically of the like, you know, neoliberal uh, extinction rebellion, uh, you know, bugocracy people that it stems from antinatalism more or less. Then there is, I think the right wing critique, mm -hmm. which comes from neo-paganism, which I know that will you're acquainted with, which is that uh, Christianity not only subdued the peoples of the earth and, you know, brought them out of disunity with the land and derooted them. And, you know, Christianity was the quote unquote first cosmopolitan act and that it really uh, disregards the earth. And of course that's the Nietzschean critique that Christianity mm -hmm. and Catholicism uh, disregards life. And it, you know, it's very much, it's essentially interpreting Christianity as a, another form of Neoplatonism or Gnosticism where the earth is irrelevant. The earth is actually evil. It is transcendence that only matters. So I guess uh, if you wanted to go or, well, Michael, I mean, both of you, actually, this is an open question. Uh, what do you think of that assessment that in, you know, Christianity actually disregards the concerns over the earth itself and that it's very neglectful or that by having more children that you are somehow evil and that, you know, it, but it is funny that even Taz Kaczynski said that. Um, you know, perhaps people who are aware should be having more children rather than people who are consciously trying to destroy the earth. So I, I wonder, like, what do you what do you two think of this, uh, this myth or this notion that people have of Catholicism and Christianity when it comes to environmentalism? I think the uh, the passage that uh, William just read and you know, speaks to it beautifully and the idea uh, creation you know, a singing glory of God and that, um, you know, we're, we're part of that, of that song of, of, of being and that song of creation. Like we have harmony, uh, in that. I think, I think that passage continues to go on or that, or that dialogue continues to go on. It might be another Dostoevsky, but he, um, he begs forgiveness from all the animals, from the birds particularly, and talks about how all of the world is connected like a great dark ocean. I'm not going to get the words right because it's not in front of me. But, um, and that movement on one side affects movement on the other. And that by like prostrating himself in front of the, the bird, even the small, smallest of creatures affects like great unseen oceans on the other side of the world. Um, 
and that uh and, and so this idea that there's a course of creation and that kind of all things are related um, through the harmony in which they sing the glory of God um, is just a beautiful notion and a very, very Catholic one. Um, mm -hmm. I could talk about, uh, so there's something I always like to bring up when we have this discussion about like what, you know, the, the Catholic dominion and everything else, right? So the Old Testament, right? It moves across the altar, right? So it is reconciled by Christ. And, and you have to ask yourself, like, uh, and William, you talked about, and you, you talked a little bit about that in the first things of what you're saying, right? So Christ comes and, like, reconciles, right, as the new Adam, like, all the problems. And what does Christ sacramentally put at the center, right? What, what he, he puts his ever-renewing body at an act of communion at the center mm -hmm. of Catholicism. And so I think that he can't do that, right? Why wasn't it, you know, it, it, there's, there's reason there for us to really contemplate and think deeply about why communion is at the center, you know, why this act of communion, I mean, it could have been, Christ could have picked a lot of different things, right? Um, he, he, right, he, right. It could have been a dance, you know, it could have been, there could have been a lot of metaphor, uh, uh, and, and not, you know, uh, not, what is a parable, uh, not metaphor, a parable in the, in the, he could have picked some, a loaf of bread. Right. <laughs> Right, right, right. <laughs> yeah, the conquest for bread. Yeah, right. um, and so but, uh, th that that act of communion at the center of it all um, informs uh, a deep kind of thinking about like what communion is, and if we think practically, so it is take it apart on the practical level of relationship, uh, you know, and I mean real tangible how we relate to things. Right, communion happens at consumption. Right? We eat things and we commune with them and they become us and we excrete them back in the landscape. And then there's this kind of mysterious uh, session and then things come back into us. And so he picks yeah. that process uh, to, to teach and to put uh, uh, humanity at the center of. And I think it has a lot to instruct, right? That, that's, that's like farming and eating, you know? Yeah. That's, like, yeah. that's like what he's putting at the center. He's like this reconciles you know the the my sacrifice at the cross and 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 the 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 su the supper and your ability to come to that sacrifice at the cross and partake in my body reconciles the sins of adam uh, i think there's there's something very very profound in that and i believe um that it speaks very you know very much to type of prime uh primary and closeness with an, and thoughtfulness and stewardship of all the things that are related to our practical pattern of communion um again mm -hmm. that comes down to farming right um uh, right he's got bread and wine <laughs> um, yeah yeah in the, in the in yeah in the new testament's latent with farming metaphors i mean even the lamb of christ um the lamb is that which conquers the lion at you know Re yeah, revelation the hundredth sheep the pair you know um, the, yeah. the the drowning the of pigs <laughs> virtually every virtually every parable is agriculturally rooted I, uh, no pun intended uh, it's either wheat uh vine you know grapes or uh, or uh, shepherding um and there's very few uh, uh none come to mind honestly uh, uh, of christ uh at least his his teachings that are that are in parable form that aren't um, that, that don't appeal to the people's knowledge of, of agriculture in one form or another. And, uh, uh sorry, if I may, uh, so, I don't know, were you finished, Michael? I can. Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. Uh, you, you take it away. Um, I was just going to say, you know, uh, this may be an interesting observation, um, for you guys as cradle Catholics from someone kind of having, having seen Catholicism from the outside growing up and eventually, uh, sought and desired to join it. But, you know, I think in America, and Gio, you wanted to talk about Catholicism in America. Yeah. I think in America, um, at least from the outside, the, you know, Catholicism is essentially, uh, and maybe this is especially true in the post-Vatican II world, um, but it, Catholicism is essentially viewed, or at least how I viewed it growing up, was as a, a sort of cultural affectation of the Irish and the Italian immigrants. Who yeah. Are almost, <laughs> yeah. Who are almost <laughs> yeah. all urban. And so obviously, you know, you see, like, to me, seeing my view of Catholicism from the outside growing up was that it almost is like a, actually, this is quite funny. I, um, 
to illustrate this point, I, I was at a farmer's market uh, a year or two ago and um, the woman running the farmer's market, it was, uh, I, I, um, I cringe to admit I was, uh, I was, it was on a Sunday. So I was uh, selling, selling, uh, you know, transacting on the Sabbath, but um, the, uh, <laughs> the woman, I, 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 I sorry. I'm braiding a whip slowly. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, <laughs> please. Uh, no, but the woman, the woman who, uh, you know, I was, I would go to church early in the morning, like 7 a.m. mass, and then, you know, have everything loaded up and, and then go to, uh, go to this farmer's market. And, uh, you know, I would show up like in relatively nice clothes. And so the woman running the market was like, oh, you know, um, do you go to church before this? And I said, yes. And she says, and she says, oh, what kind of church do you go to? I said, Catholic. And she says, oh, you're Catholic? Well, I'm Christian. You know, as oh. though, <laughs> uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So like that, that I think she was like some sort of evangelical, but, um, uh, you know, uh, that like, that is a real perspective that, you know, like this Catholicism is uh popery, you know, it doesn't, it's not even, it's not about, papists, yeah. yeah, papists. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and that's, and you know, there's this weird thing with the Pope and, uh, you know, that's their thing. And, uh, I guess they say they're Christians, but like what, you know, uh, that's that's kind of the view. And uh, sorry to, to bring it back to what I was going to say is that it, the Italian and, and the Irish, uh, who who basically brought Catholicism uh, to this country, um, are are almost universally and still in large part are uh, urban people. Um, and mm -hmm. uh, city and certainly certainly for the the first uh, you know <laughs> handful of decades of of their um, their presence here. Um, and so. You know, it's very easy. Another another association that inevitably happens is an association of Catholicism with the with the urban space and with um, the concrete jungle and you know with like Boston and New York and not with uh, nature and you and especially because you know if you drive through like farmland, um, you know there's there's uh, there are like billboards with you know like in Indiana with like very evangelical type. Um, you know, like just like black and white, like Jesus saves, like uh, yeah, very southern yeah. gothic too yeah. as well. Yeah, and so that's obviously you know it's not a, a it's it's a it's a Christian method it's a Christian message, but it's not it's not aesthetically Catholic, uh, and and you can and so it's, the, the it's rural... of the yeoman farmer ideal that was already present in America with the Anglo wasp and also Dutch Germanic right. immigrants. Right. Yeah. Yes, yeah. so so I think I think in America, you know. Um, urban areas and now as as you get you know this is changing now because a lot of S south american immigrants aren't even catholic they're like evangelicals or mormons or something but uh, or sam Huerta, or, yeah <laughs> right <laughs> um so but but you know previous um waves of south south and central american immigrants coming into cities also uh basically the point i'm making is that i think uh, particularly from outside the church um it's it's easy to see Catholicism as as kind of an urban phenomenon in America, yeah. and and to see you know to the extent that Christianity, well, obviously not to the extent, but uh, you know C Christianity in rural areas is is almost exclusively evangelical, um, and so ha to have a Catholic land movement, um, you know, and, and they 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 are kind of they reject Catholicism for their for for other reasons, uh, and so so to have a to have a Catholic land movement. Um, it becomes challenging in this context, you know, but yes. that, that doesn't mean that, you know, um, that there's not an extremely rich and extremely sensical, uh, tradition of, of Catholic, uh, Catholic, th you know, rural and nature based Catholic thought and, and livelihoods and, um, and, you know, uh, tradition. So, um, yeah. yeah. And you would say that it was bound up, I think in America with the sort of wasp, you know, either the Anglo, well, I mean, they've, the, the eternal Anglo has their own history with the Irish, but let's say the Anglo-Germanic element of America, the founding stock of America proper, that this was bound up with sort of the anxieties around the largely port city, urban, largely Catholic slash, you know, you know, papist, Ital Irish first, then Italian immigrants, mm -hmm. that this was due to the anxieties around the, changing amalgamation of the european admixtures in america that do, this is probably i think contributed to a lot of the anti-catholic uh, catholic thought that was going on and we all seen the hilarious um mm -hmm. propaganda posters of the time of uh 
you know, the Pope uh, influencing America. And, uh, <laughs> no, no blacks, yeah. no blacks, no dogs, no Irish. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. At the time, the uh, Irish were considered part of like that lower class. Um, like I remember the signs that said Irish need not apply for like jobs right. programs. Yeah, yeah. Right. And what was that? Didn't Trump get in trouble for uh, calling something a paddy wagon? Or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think, yeah. Oh boy. But, uh, <laughs> um, you know, and uh, the movie, the movie Gangs of New York, uh, is a great uh, exposition uh, on, yeah. on you know the early Irish, um, in you know potato famines during the Civil War influx as as uh, as, as red pilled frogs uh, enjoy pointing out. You know, the Union Army was like seventy five percent Irish born, uh, non non native stock Americans, um, and. Uh, you know, it's, oh, yeah, very interesting. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if it was seventy-five percent, but it was it was a lot. Uh, <laughs> like you know, um, what's the uh, the line from the song is like? Uh, but when we got to Yankee Land, they shoved a gun into our hand, saying, "Patty, you must go and fight for Lincoln." Um, it's something <laughs> like that. And uh, so you know, this is just like a yeah, it's a it's something that you don't. It's a it's a bit of a aspect of American history that you don't realize uh, getting kind of a normie uh, public school well, education, I, but. Yeah, and I think that probably highlights the sort of tensions around, you know, I mean, well, Will, you know, like on the right wing, uh, on the E right, as I like to call it, the tensions between people who are Southerners, who are Protestants, or who are of, um, how can I say this without YouTube, um, politics <laughs> of a particular uh, identitarian variety, how they have this um, anxiety <laughs> or this sort of critique of uh, the way that trad Catholicism has been sold into like the body of right wing politics, um, mm -hmm. like you know the sort of integralist right. that awesome fed cast, but also I mean like <laughs> America first integralist. Like, what do you like? And I guess Michael as well. I mean, because you're a family man as well, and I want to get to the anti natalist aspect of certain forms of environmentalism. But what do you think of like Catholic identity, like being an American? Catholicism always had, I think. I, I was talking about this with with Zante, identic Jesus where, you know, Catholicism always had this tension in America. But in some ways, over time, it seems that when it comes to American life, Catholicism takes up this, like, other role in America, this other, not founding stock, mind you, of course not, but this sort of other strain of Americana that refuses to be ignored. And it seems now mm -hmm. that the composition of the religious right is largely Catholic and Orthodox. I mean, there is Protestants and there's a lot of, like, you know, pagans, um, that's always a sticky issue. But when it comes to religion, like explicitly traditionalist politics in America now, it seems that the Catholics and the Orthodox people are taking over. So, I, I mean, two, so two things from, from, from all that, uh, that we were just talking about it was one about the urban Catholics. Um, it's really, really interesting that the, uh, you know, Leo the 13th encyclical, um, and his uh, stance uh, against um, communism that was emerging, uh, you know, on the other side of the world, um, mm -hmm. takes takes root in Europe, and in a lot of ways becomes a, a, a back to the land movement. And that's what that's what the uh, you know the the English and the Irish um, Catholic response to that to that threat of industrialism and and urban. Um, you know, uh, uh, urbanization of the poor. Um, th that's what the Catholic land movement was about. It was, uh, you know, uh, back in Europe and in, and in America, <laughs> that critique um, and, and the, the action that came from those encyclicals, uh, Leo the Thirteenth encyclicals, the, 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 it's the Catholic workers. Movement, right? Yeah. So the yeah. Catholic land movement doesn't appear. It becomes the Catholic workers movement. So you get the Catholic workers. Um, which are very, very different, you know. It's a, so uh, just to play on that, that even the the kind of like action performance um, that that uh, that the, that that came from America in refuting, um, it, you know, uh, the the tenets of industrialism and liberalism and uh, and and the things that gave rise to the on, on the other side of the pond, the the, the Catholic land movement mm -hmm. here became the Catholic worker movement, which it was like uh, all about immigrant rights, um, you know, uh, 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 workers. I'm a worker, right. man. I'm a union, a uh, pipe fizz union, 4260. Uh, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. exactly. So it's, just, it's just interesting how you know, in the action there, it, it, uh, you know, that's, 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 that's what appeared. And then, um, 
uh, the the second thing about the, the bigger question about like how does uh, Catholicism fit into the American experience um, is is you know one of the things that drove me back to Catholicism in understanding it is that as I came into like you know I'll admit that in my like you know uh, teenage years and twenties like I said I drifted a lot of my political wanderings could be, could be, you know, it was like deep ecology and environmentalism and mm-hmm. kind of that, that anti-globalization movement. There's this brilliant essay by, um, by Kings North, if you're familiar with him. Yes. Recently. Yeah. Yeah. He was on Al- my friend Alex Kishuda's uh, show recently, but he's yeah, a great yeah. writer. He's a brilliant yeah. writer. Yeah. He's great. Yeah. But, but he, ha- he talks very specifically about the, 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 uh, tr- 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 the traveling of the anti-globalization movement from mm-hmm. left wing yes. to right wing over the past, you know, two decades. And I do that, you know, so, so my story is one that kind of follows that trajectory. So put me Man, you the- really are core Gen X. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Were you I'm in the- Seattle in 99? Were you? No, I can't talk about that. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Oh, okay. damn! Oh, see, this is such a relic. I love this stuff because I, I, that, I, yeah. I remember when 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 it was called Black Block and not Antifa. Let's just put it like yeah. that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, oh man, so, yeah, that's they totally, amazing. They totally sigh up that whole thing. Uh, but but yeah, in any event, and those guys were like reading Kaczynski and like you know Green Anarchy and all that stuff. Anyway, whatever. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna. Try, well, try. well, Derek Jensen's one of my favorites. He's been viciously canceled by totally. well, a certain sector of um, the well, left. Language, language older than words. I was totally reading that. Like, you know. Oh, for, man. For years ago. Um, this is but... amazing. I love this stuff, man. <laughs> I love how excited you get about it, man. It makes me happy. <laughs> yeah, like, that's an old, but that's great. Like, that's when, like, a faction of Gen X, like, they had that sort of instantiation of meaning. Like, it was an act of politics. It was the sort of you know when ad busters and vice magazine were cool like right. that you know the stuff that later like millennials such as myself and and will like we sort of only got the back end of that with like occupy wall street and you know i mean the tea party had died out but like that's it was mm-hmm. only till i think really i would say you know the ground zero of the internet gamer game and then of course 2016 where now you have this sort of this code switching where now it's like the E right that takes over and becomes like, has the same cool factor. Cause you know, I mean, what happened to left politics at this time, I think is incredibly crucial to understand the way in which we are living through the current political situation, the way in which they buried the anti-globalization movement and to a large extent, Mm -hmm. these sort of deep ecology environmental movement that was, you know, Mm -hmm. popular at this time. And, uh, and and will like will you you have some um knowledge of this as well uh i know we're diverging from the catholic thing but this is just a fascinating topic i really mm-hmm. you well, know I, like I, yeah yeah go ahead michael it runs ahead. into the catholic thing because um you know the, all of those movements still had at their base right they were swept up though those are you know when anti-globalization was like part of like an indigenous rights movement or a part of like yes uh, yes a, a broader uh, uh you know union movement or you know these tra- the, the things is uh, kind of classically associated with the left wing but then you have this disillusionment that happens in all of those movements and what uh you know uh, intellectually many participants in those movements begin to actually get uh, to a deeper core of criticism which actually confronts like liberalism yes and, yes yes and, yes and in the confrontation of liberalism well how far do you have to go in in catholic social teaching <laughs> <laughs> catholics have been saying wait, wait. forever you know <laughs> let me uh yeah. this i i've been waiting to uh to jump in this is the perfect opportunity because i'm I've got on my on my phone here. Uh, I just want to read. Uh, sorry, I, I do have uh, original thoughts, but I want to read the the opening bit from the uh, Americanism parenthesis heresy, uh, yeah, and parenthesis uh, Wikipedia page. Yes. Americanism was in the years around 1900 a political and religious outlook attributed to some American Catholics and denounced as heresies by the Holy See. In the 1890s. European continental conservative clerics detected signs of modernism or classical liberalism, which Pope Pius IX had condemned in the Syllabus of Errors in 1864, among the beliefs and teachings of many members of the American Catholic hierarchy who denied the charges. Pope Leo XIII uh, wrote against these ideas in in a letter to Cardinal James Gibbons, published as Testem uh, Benevolentiae Nostre. The Pope lamented for America where church and state 
lamented for America, where church and state are, quote, dissevered and divorced, and wrote of his preference for a closer relationship between the Catholic Church and the state along European lines. The long-term result was that the Irish Catholics, who largely controlled the Catholic Church in the United States, increasingly demonstrated total loyalty to the Pope and suppressed traces of liberal thought in the Catholic colleges. At bottom, the conflict was cultural, as the continental conservative Europeans, angered at the heavy attacks on the Catholic Church in Germany, France, and other countries, moved to stamp out the individualist attitude in America. Um, sorry, I just I wanted to continue. Whoa, People right. don't realize that, yeah, uh, like the church, uh, Americanism is a, is a Catholic heresy. Okay, so, you know, Bab has a famous post that says, uh, like, America is a is an Anglo and Protestant country and like fundamentally. And, you know, if you don't like that, then like, get, get over it. Yeah. 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 Um, and that's, well, that's true. Uh, sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. Here, so here, here's my like throwback to like, what does the Catholic experience uh, do with America? Like uh, America has been able to play out its, uh, its error to where we get now, right now, here's the fruit of like, you know, a rampant uh, individualism and, 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 and rampant liberalism and moral relativism, you know, and the, and the whatever. And ho Oh, look, it is a slippery slope after all, isn't it fellas? And so, <laughs> and so we, we get the Catholic right there at, at, at the bottom of that slippery slope, catching everyone before they descend into absolute and total hell. And so we, so so there so there we are right keeping that perennial truth as catholics being like we mm -hmm. told you we told y'all you know like and just i just see like pius the 10th just like staring with his with his you know pursed smile or lefebvre or one of the other ones just being like, <laughs> <laughs> we told the holy bishop lefebvre who did nothing wrong by the way yes. um, <laughs> a great man a saint uh will be will be a saint uh, be he's a saint, saint whether you like it or not <laughs> so so but but you know the the point uh, i think i said this maybe it was lafayette i said this to somebody recently who who said that to me, you know, America's a, it wasn't him who said it, but maybe it was in one of his threads or something. Somebody just randomly said like, get over it. Like America's like a Protestant, you know, liberal experiment. And that's what it is, you know, and that reduces America to America, the idea. And right, um, right. America, the idea is literally being proven as, as, as a failure right now. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And, yes, yeah. And so, where where do you what do you find refuge in? You find refuge in in the in the classical patterns of conservatism. You, you find refuge uh, the conservative, the true conservative that hasn't like flipped on the libertarian switch. Um, the true conservative finds refuge in reactionaryism. Um, it, you know, in and and all of those bodies of thought have been held by Catholics. You know, and yes. so Catholics, uh, what, what what what's America? <laughs> America's happening, and this is this is my super hot take. Amer the whole story of America is about healing the Protestant error. Whoa, that, that's, that's going to ring some ears. When this yeah, comes. people are going to get pissed about that, but that's the truth. That's really what I believe is that the whole story of America is like an expose of like, and and here here you got it. It's like it's like giving a kid permission to do something when you know they're going to get it by doing it but it's just like oh they got to experience it well here you go kids you got it you know um but, but at the same time i think that both of you are americans like me i have a very like i'm just gonna be honest i know like people who are listeners of mine who are canadian who come from founding either like anglophone or francophone stocks they get very upset at this at my black pilling over canada but the really reality is is like you know my mother came here in the seventies, right? Like I'm technically the son of an Ellis Islander. Like I don't have that same reverence. I mean, my father does my father who, you know, him being a son of an immigrant, but still like he has this weird, um, <laughs> what, what do you call it? Um, Anglophilia or like he's an Anglophile. Like he loves like the tradition of England and Canada and so forth. Cause he grew up in a different time, right? Like when it was still viable before, the, the full machination of uh, Trudeau senior really took hold, but mm -hmm. I, I don't have that same reverence and I struggle with it, but you two both as Catholics, how do you reconcile the fact that a America is a Protestant nation, whether it's full coming into being as a Protestant nation finds itself within this very like rootless disenchantment and secularism and sort of the, the evils that we're seeing playing out now how do you reconcile that as a catholic but also as 
Catholics that want to be integral to the very land, the very soil. I mean, and listen, I'm not dog whistling about uh, soil. I'm not, no dog, we're liberal. We're liberal. <laughs> but no dog whistles here. Um, but how do you reconcile like being Americans and working within the soil of America? And I do want to get to more practical issues later on about ecology, but um and I do want to revisit this sort of anti-globalization thing, but how do you reconcile that? Like the, the knowledge that yes, America within its very fabric is a Protestant nation is a product of a experiment in, in, you know, enlightened thinking, if you will. Well, for me, um, I think, you know, uh, like that, the, the sort of uh, the, the giga Chad in, you know, um, like pro- a Puritan black top hat, Thing. Yeah, yeah, um, that, yeah, that one. Uh, like my response to that is that is twofold. A, it's that that's true of the American North, which was founded by Puritans who were the Antifa of their day. They were iconoclasts and they hated beauty and they hated order. And oh they, my God, that's gonna uh, that's gonna uh, piss uh, off a lot of us. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, that's just the truth. Uh, you can you know, it's, <laughs> it's gotta um, do its work. Yeah. Um, oh so, man. So uh, and and I do not you know, endorse that view fully, but maybe I do. Um, <laughs> they were kicked out of kicked out of England because uh, they drove everybody nuts, um, and uh, and then they came to Massachusetts. But in the South, um, you know, I'm not a Southerner, but uh, you know. The, the you know it, it, a different a different you know an Anglo Catholic uh, thing was going on. I was actually at a, uh, a you know an Episcopalian wedding uh, recently, and I was struck by how uh, basically you know it was far more based and and traditionally oriented than um, say your average Northern Novus Novus Ordo. But um, yeah. Anyway, um, like the point is that uh, Ang- England. Um, Every, most of what we have that, that we like about England or that makes us Anglophiles it comes from the fact that uh, it was and then tried to become again a Catholic country. Um, and, it, it, you know, it had a, it had a, and even into, think, think about, you know, a guy like T.S. Eliot, who was an Amer- born in America, uh, raised, raised as a mm-hmm. Unitarian kind of fake, uh, you know, weird Protestant derivation. Um, and he, you know, was extremely based. Uh, he, what his famous line is that he's, uh, in, in art, he's a classicist in uh, politics. He's a monarchist and in religion, he's, uh, he says he's an Anglo Catholic, but the point is just that, um, you know, the English, and he flirted the, with some other based uh, political. Yes. Movement. Yes. But, yes. And <laughs> his friend Ezra Pound did more, did more than flirt. Uh, but um <laughs> yeah. his editor uh, but um the point is just that you know at when and and he he uh, eventually converted to um anglicanism uh and for a guy like that who uh you know was who had those views that at that time to think that the ch- that church which is what it is now uh was satisfactory to him is kind of you know it puts things in perspective in terms of um in terms of this question of like what, you know, the, the influence of, of Anglo religion on, on modern America. And, um, and the, the, the other thing to say is simply, uh, there was something else I was going to say about Elliot, but I'll, I'll, I'll have to come back to it. But the other thing I was going to say is just that, um, you know, uh, all, all forms of Christianity other than Catholicism itself are derivative of Catholicism. Um, and, and they all start off as, you know, Lutheranism, uh, and and orthodoxy start off as uh, start off acknowledging this that you know um, the that that uh, the bishop of Rome is 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 Peter and uh, and you know that uh, that uh, Christ said to Peter um, you know uh, on this rock I'll build my church and, and yeah well the orthodox they would heavily heavily disagree with that but you, well they would now but I'm just saying at the time of yeah, the schism, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah this was acknowledged and they didn't think that they were going to create. A whole new church, and then that that just that that fissure uh, widens over time. And same thing with with Luther. Um, uh, and uh, but you know, um, the, and now obviously, a hundred uh, centuries and centuries later, we we have we have uh, we have in some cases completely separate uh, quote unquote churches. But um, uh, like the point is just that to me, and, and a big a big reason uh, that I sort of you know ended up tracing, tracing my roots back to Catholicism is just, you know, uh, all of these, all of these other, you, you want, you want your faith to come from the source, you know? Um, right, and, right. 
And if, um, if, if what you're, if, if the faith that you're practicing is a derivative of something else, it's, you know, then, then wouldn't you want to, to sort of, uh, um, you know, trace it back and, and, and get, get back to the, the original thing isn't, you know, don't you want the, that, that sort of, and, 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 you know, that sort of thinking was significant for me personally, but it's true also of, um, you know, America, I think we can, you know, we all agree that America was, was founded as a Christian country. It was founded right. by Christians, uh, different, different. Well, of actually different it wasn't really, <laughs> but no, they, <laughs> yeah. by all, uh, by all practical means it, yes, it was. I mean, the, the, well, actually it was a secular nation is like, frankly, that's crap, but yeah. yeah. And so, and so the point just being, um, you know, uh, that, that will always be true. And, um, perhaps America itself, uh, can, can, uh, trace, can trace, trace its spiritual roots back the same way that, uh, so many of us have done. Yeah. There's also, you, you kind of touched on it briefly that, you know, the, the, the story of, of the America, the contemporary America, right. The, the story of America has been rewritten many, yes, many, yes. many times. Yes. The mythology, uh, the, the, the mythological, underpinnings right and any nation no matter what right it needs these mythological kind of foundations and that that mythology has been rewritten several times you know there's this wonderful book on um, the royalists revolution um it's written by some guy at harvard fella but um really under it goes back and looks at the american revolution and how many of the patriots actually within the context of the english civil war would have seen themselves as loyal to the crown mm -hmm. um that they mm -hmm. were resisting the unjust tax burden of like an out of control legislature, you know that that that, that the English that the English Parliament was completely out of control and usurped the power of the crown, um, you know that it, it kind of it just just kind of and that you know went crazy and then needed these lords and whatever else needed to fund their war and overburdened the American colony. With so it was really the secular authority rather than the mythologized notion of like you know america was railing specifically against king george it was rather the secular parliamentarian authority Whoa, that was 100 percent. yep wow yep. very interesting yeah yeah interesting. uh there's a, it's a great it's a great book but it's worth it's worth the read um this was like common knowledge back then and they even talk about how it was in this book there's i forget what one of the signers you know talks about how this is going to get lost that this is what most people we're fighting about, you know, um, or this was what drove people to fight was the unjust overreach of the parliament. Um, that, that, that we're something else is going to emerge here at the end the danger. But, but now it's like the sexy narrative. I think of that sort of like, like you were saying, which is a very liberal notion itself that like ideas change the world. Like the right. idea of America, <laughs> you know, no, totally. the idea of America no. as a secular nation that is divorced from the old world, that specifically rebelled against monarchical authority. That's a very yeah. sexy narrative for you know, yeah, yeah, it's, it's total bullshit. It's, it's not, it's not true. Yeah. <laughs> but, but yeah, you're right. It's like it's like a enchanted, uh, you know, generations now of Americans. Um, but, but um, the other thing that I wanted to point out uh, is just that you know the the, the, the triumph of of contemporary American, you know, re mythological rewrite also um, uh, uh, treats the Southern experience, which we briefly touched on, but like the, su I mean, very badly. And, and the Southern experience um, and, and, and Southern America, uh, I think it's Weaver who says this, uh, is like the last gasps of the classical world, right? Like the classical mm -hmm. world mm -hmm. of refuge mm -hmm. in the American South and reestablishes like classical society. And you have this in American architecture, right? You have these, these, these themes, you know, in our built landscape of like this resurgence of the classical periods. Um, and, mm -hmm. and you have this very Aristotle type social work, right? You have very rigid class structure. You have um, a very agrarian manorial kind of uh, a build to the, to the society. And this was again, to William's point, like, destroyed by the northern industrialists you know and then yeah. buried and and you know so I, I you know i don't want to get too too far into it but there's that's america's heritage too is that story even though it's been buried and obscured and there's been a triumph of, of over you know that that to understand the american story uh correctly is one to en encompass even the aspects of its history which have been rewritten or or destroyed or obscured um and yeah so and then yeah. one more, just, just just to answer, like, how do I feel about a Catholic like this? Like us, 
us Catholics, like we had our heyday and, and, uh, uh, and, and the cathedral still stand yet. They tell us it was like a dark age, you know? <laughs> so like, yeah, well, yeah. We, we've been living in, in the, everyone else has been living in the rooms and, and it's their cash cow, their tourist industry cash cow. So they're, yeah, they yeah. owe it to the, <laughs> no, we need, we need to reclaim all that money for Rome. Yeah, yeah, they're living in the ruins of Catholic social order. Like all of Western civilization is living in the ruins of Catholic social order. You know, yeah. Um, yeah. and so you know, it's all, it's all, it's all still there. You know, and again, just in the same way that the royalist understanding of the American Revolution or the classical understanding of the American South is obscured, that 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 type of idea that like we're living really the cultural um, uh, residual of Catholic social order is still what's holding society together. Yeah. And like, for instance, uh, think about the law, you know, um, uh, the uh, like the, what kind of what, what kind of religion was English was England practicing when, uh, when the Magna Carta was was signed, you know. Right. Uh, yeah. And so like British common law, English common law, the, the, the foundation of the American what is now the American legal tradition. Uh, this is a this is a. Uh, you know, a, a custom, a, tra a tradition of, of customs and, and laws and, and uh, you know, way of life, basically, a uh, societal order that originates, um, originates in it for its first, you know, three, uh, well, m multiple centuries in, in, you know, in a, a Catholic cytoplasm. Uh, and so, you know, um, <laughs> the, 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 the uh, it, like, you just can't separate, you know, uh, as long as America is a Western country, which it obviously always will be, barring uh, you know the cleansing, the cleansing fire of nuclear Armageddon, um, or or uh, the total Brazilification, but that probably won't. Well, we'll see what happens. Well, it'll just it'll still be a Western country. That would just mean that the West is as you know. Uh, <laughs> Brazil is actually looking more a bit like. Well, my story, people know my, my I'm ethnically Italian. But um, my family, my mother's side, my maternal side, since World War I, most of them have been living in Brazil as the, uh, you know, the Catholic, um, Catholic Italian uh, expats to Brazil. And my mother was born and raised in Sao Paulo. And the way things are in Brazil, I mean, they probably have more of, I think, a national unity even then, a lot of like huge chunks mm -hmm. of America now. So the whole Brazilification thing is South America in general. The, the patriotism is uh, extremely strong. Uh, yeah, it's yeah. quite interesting. I got a big side of my Italian family in Argentina. So. Oh, there you go. Yeah, yeah. I, I think I have some relatives in Argentina too. I There's think. many. There are many Anglo's in Argentina too, Michael. Uh, you know, uh, uh, it's uh, it's it's quite funny. You know, you go uh, you can go to Patagonia and. Uh, <laughs> and there are Welshmen, Welshmen and Scotsmen who uh, who still speak of this very kind of like uh, you know nineteenth century style English, uh, oh, yeah. with, with with the accompanying accents, uh, you know, because they just live in complete isolation. Um, See, so we uh, need to preserve it. We need to sheep. implement a total global Hakanian um, containment policy, in my opinion. I like it. <laughs> yeah, but <laughs> um, but. <laughs> <laughs> but, but what's what's interesting though is that the recognition of america as a modernist force and that the, the south had to be crushed by the industrialists and it's not the uh well the other narrative that people are accepting now i know that the pope at the time during the american civil war had some very uh, problematic opinions on um, what was going on here, here in North America. But that being said, I, I think uh, I want to get back to the, the land thing, but I think what's a good question is uh, how do you feel about when it comes to, I, I, you know, I think all three of us, we share a similar story. Like I have myself, you know, when I was younger, dabbled in the uh, new age movement as well. Um, but how do you feel about the claim that, you know, Catholics, a lot of trad cats online that you're just LARPing and that this is all just a LARP and the fed cats. And I think that, you know, to give some context, there was, I think, a faction of Catholics within the Republican Party, um, within the sort of post-Southern strategy. There was, you know, Pat Buchanan, there was the Paleocons, but then, of course, a lot of you know, during the, in the late 70s, 80s, and right up until the Iraq and Afghanistan wars, the Paleocons were bodied. Um, the like snobbish Atlantic uh, state, you know, uh, coal baron, oil baron, William F. Buckley types, they uh, basically set out to destroy 
a lot of the Catholic uh, paleocons. And I think that nowadays we're seeing this sort of revival of Catholic paleoconservatism in America. Mm -hmm. but, but what do you two feel about the charge that you two are like all of us were just LARPing and that it's not a real thing and that actually um, it would pollute the founding stock of America. And like, you know, you have people like Adrian Vermeule and all this stuff. And of course you have the Zoomer cats who use Catholicism as a political bludgeon. Like, what do you, what do you feel about the sort of the state of Catholicism and conservative or right-wing politics in America currently, uh, especially in the online, because you two are actually doing something. You're actually, you know, putting your money's where your mouth is, right? Like mm -hmm. you are homesteading and you have families and so forth. And, uh, but but what do you feel about like sort of people that take inspiration from you two and 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 truly feel that there has to be that, that there is a spiritual void that must be filled, but yet it's like well there's LARPing and there's like this fixation around sexuality and and uh, sexual anxiety, uh, mm -hmm. you know a typical charge against trad cats. So yeah. Mm -hmm. um, well, let me just say about uh, about the Vermula thing, which I guess is you're alluding to his the sort of immigration question um yeah, uh, yeah. the you know i i asked uh i i uh, after after my chat with uh with bap i went to went to my went to mass uh this sunday and asked a couple folks uh who i who are like you know serious trad casts like irl like you know boomer fed posting you know not not online but fed posting verbally uh, <laughs> in, in real life <laughs> <laughs> trad path type people what do you think of adrian vermula and none of them had ever heard of him yeah who right that's the... <laughs> like this this and and none of them are all of them are you know they when they pray the rosary uh they pray for trump uh as part of like you know <laughs> after, uh, after the rosary you know like uh and you know there, there's like in in the uh in the old missiles you know the prayers for uh, like our leaders and stuff but uh you know so like they're they're not um I just, I just don't, other than online, and you were asking Gio, like, particularly about online, like, other than online, I don't think that this uh, overlap or this, like, you know, <laughs> conflation of traditional Catholicism <laughs> with, like, open borders exists. It's, it's an insane, um, uh, you know, crazy uh, conflation that, you know, Vermula and his gang have concocted. And it, it uh, you know, it has nothing to do with them. Um, with it, it's just such an obvious like it's just obvious like neoliberal infiltration of the church you know of course uh, yeah. the, the, the reason that i mean the, it, it, assuming that they're not totally cynical um the, the 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 excuse that they give is that um uh you know they they have like the pope has has made sort of like uh statements um uh insinuating that open borders are or or you know um what do they say like a sheltering sheltering the the uh the refugee this sort of thing is a uh, which is let's like be a honest a lot of churches in certain places of california they do yeah um, yeah no yeah. no they do they do and and um you know i think i think there's a difference between uh helping your fellow man in need in your day-to-day -day life and you know advocating policies that uh, that you know uh, would would you know are actually that that um, hurt more people than they help, and that are are you know um, not only hurt people but hurt uh, the societal structure, and so you know and hurt I, the I, land as well. The, and the land too, yeah. Yeah. definitely, yeah. So um, so you know, I think I think it's just uh, what I was getting at is just that it's 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 obvious that um, it's obvious that uh, you know there, there, there's just uh, a sort of uh, mind virus. This the same neoliberal mind virus that has infected so many institutions. The church is not exempt. The church has been uh, infected by many mind viruses over the centuries, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. uh, it's going through one such period now. And uh, the the good news is, uh, you know, it's an untenable ideology. And so, uh, as we're seeing now, the only the the, the uh, Young priests are only interested in becoming traditional priests. Uh, young yes. people are only interested in uh, participating in traditional Catholicism. You know, it's just uh, this, this sort of like uh, attempt to reconcile um, Catholicism and modernity, Catholicism and, and like neoliberal boomer um, worldview, hippie worldview is just, it's just not, it doesn't make sense, you know, like, uh, and that's in the long run how God wins is that the, the universe has order. Um, it can, <laughs> you can make <laughs> reliable <laughs> observations about it. Um, and you know, like the laws of physics exist. You don't even need, um, th this is, this is like the, <laughs> this is like the, the first, um, uh, you know, that you can rely on, on this as, as you know, the, the, uh, the, 
long-term instrument of justice. Uh, you know, these, these thing, things that don't make sense will not last uh, right. forever. Uh, they may last a long time. Well, well some of the infiltrators of the, some of the infiltrators of the church, uh, they have actual viruses. Uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> I would argue that the, 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 the entirety of the world is, revolves around, right, the, the, the Catholic sacrament of the Eucharist and that, and that the church's error is infecting the world rather than the other way around. Um, yeah, well, that, mm -hmm. it's funny because the same mechanisms I was um, – my good friend uh, Jeffrey Schollenberger, he's doing this course with uh, – Justin Murphy about Rene Girard and, and Girard explicitly says exactly what you said that the sort of notion of the the sort of externalization of the inner sacrifice of the church towards the world and the state of the church as well nowadays like not only did it create high civilization but now we're experiencing the sort of pains of a um, decline that is in tandem with the decline of the church but yeah. And, but Michael, I wanted to ask you because you are like a family man and you are um, a homesteader. What do you feel about the charges of LARPing and what do you feel about the younger Catholics, the Zoomer Cats that may or may not be entering Catholicism for more than, you know, pure reasons of like, you know, stuff that you and Will were talking about of sort of this deep compulsion that you both experienced I mean, in coming. Yeah, deep, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, my answer to that is that um, you know, I, I, so a couple couple folds on that. One 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 fold is that any broad based like movement, right? So we're seeing this movement back to Catholicism and a movement back to traditional Catholicism, and it's yes. gonna it's gonna entertain a, a wide range of characters, right? If you look at any movement, right, you have like Spurgy Wignats and like you know, yeah, right, right, stuff. You have like the you know. Um, the, 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 the uh, all right scenes got the, what's, what's the little golem looking guy that got, that nobody likes anymore. Um, the, the, the hairdo, the America first kid. Um, oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, I guess he, one of his kids walked in me. I know that was me. That was me. Sorry. Oh, um, no problem. My, my bad. Um, but um, but there's uh, you know, so any movement is gonna uh, attract like a fringe that is like getting a handle on it, you know, and it's just kind of like a mess, you know. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. So so you can't have any broad movement without having like some element of it being a mess. Um, so it's like you know to, to, to enact that any type of like large social movement is going to have like uniformed purity is just and, and like is going to be righteous and all elements and manifest is that's that's like an un, it's untenable it's not going to happen you know so you, you're going to have people who are a little off um yeah and, well and like you were saying like when you were talking about how by cultivating the land you cultivated yourself you're reading while right. doing work you know, engaging in the community and family life. The family life is an extension of the community. I mean, hopefully the Zoomer calves can be, you know, eventually can awaken into forming these semi-rural or rural communities that yeah. we all dream of. Right. And, yeah. and I think it's important to nurture the impulse in those people. So, and then yeah, I also think it's important to, to like reach across uh, across all these various aisles of the emerging reactionary politic in in the American experience, which has got a lot of different, you, you've identified a bunch of them, Gio. You know, I would identify yeah. like the compact magazine and like, yeah. you know, yeah. you're like you, you can keep going. Like there's, it's it's everywhere, right? Um, the po all the post left stuff, the 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 breakdown of the gender conversation. Yeah, like, I'm you know, good friends with a lot of them actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like Nina so, Power and yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So so it's you know even the tablet magazine interviewed me recently and there's just that you know the anti movement is just like breaking down. Um, you know, well, I'm gonna have to censor that for you to be. Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh right, right, right. No I'm problem. Sorry. No problem. Um, no. Yeah. <laughs> um, sorry, but. But there's like um, there's undeniable elements that are confronting like the institutionalized uh, uh, liberalism and 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 uh, you know you know modernity and it's like really really wide um, because you know that we're just as you were saying earlier, Joe. I think these are the only people saying anything transgressive and and funny. I mean, um, <laughs> yeah, like that's that's what it comes down to. Um, but I wanted to. Did, say, did you see the cap of uh, the Cafe Fian on cap that ZHB released again? Yeah, that yeah, was. I love that. That was hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> Look at you! You, can, you have one. to externalize your thoughts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that was an incredible, 
it just like amazing lucid moment um chirp right there uh yeah you literally uh you literally proved exactly what i was saying um but uh no what i wanted to say about like you know this whole this whole uh conflict that erupted a couple weeks ago with uh um certain certain cowboy and uh bap and you know the um what was it? There was a Calvin. Oh Klein yeah, the Cal- yeah. <laughs> and uh, you're just it- like uh, you know that show you like Yellowstone. You like that? <laughs> yeah, that was yeah. great, man. I love it. Yeah, uh, like yeah. yeah. So, but but you know, I think I, I just get frustrated because I, as I was, and I was talking about this with Bab, and Bab was saying, you know, there's no conflict t- between someone like me and someone like you, and I fully agree with that. But for you know, for instance, on the question of like sexual. Ha- how, how like a man's relationship to his like sexual impulses let's say um you know like i think we would all agree that uh or in my opinion when we talk when catholics talk about the virtue of like chastity this yeah. isn't this isn't um and part of this has to do with the feminization of the church um but this isn't about like you know virginity for at least not for men um it's not about like virginity or purity this is just about uh not being a slave to your passions okay and i think that vital nature and vitalists uh are, you know, don't disagree, you know, I'm not, I am not uh, an expert on that uh, field of thought, right, but from the right, ones that right. I know, I don't think that they would disagree with the, the idea that like, you know, um, if you have a, uh, a, you know, if a uh, like a sexual uh, impulse crosses your, crosses your mind, whether that's, uh, you know, to like, uh, you know, in, in, in online or in real life, <laughs> let's say, <laughs> um, that you should just like allow that to, to colonize and, and possess you. Um, I think that's, that's all, you know, just, and, and that, that goes for a lot of virtue. I think a lot of virtue can, you know, it's reduction, it's reductionary to say this, but it, you know, it's a good, a good starting point in understanding what virtue means in the first place. If you're too, you know, manliness, um, right. that it's just, it begins with self-control and particularly the virtue of, of chastity. That's all that is being asked of you by, by uh, Christ, you know, by God uh, is, is just that you not, not allow your, you know, God gave us, God gave us, and Catholic, this is a very Catholic notion. Obviously, Catholics are are no are are not shy about sexuality, and you know, we yeah, that's what I mean. We have a very, friends. we have a way more complex, like especially being Italian, like we're always got this, like yeah, you're when it's like guilt, yeah. but on the other <laughs> end, yeah, we're uncontrollable, exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah. and so. Yeah. And so I think I think you know um, very Mediterranean not, complex. Yeah. Right. It's not it's not about you know repression or um, or uh, or like you know yeah uh, some sort of puritanical impulse. It's more it's about just God gave us uh, sexuality and the and the pleasures of the world and all of this. These these were present before the fall and they were they're gifts of God that were ordered to, towards certain purposes and um, all all that. Uh, what what Christ is is asking us to do uh, is is simply to um, behave behave in accordance with that order rather than um, uh, you know in in discord with it, which is what you know lust and and unchaste behavior would be. It's not about again uh, and, and and again I think it's different for men and women, um, and that's just the biological reality. But uh, a lot of the, a lot of the problem, I think, another litmus test, another kind of uh, Rorschach test is um, you know. Not just uh, or I was what I was going to say about Jordan Peterson is just that people feel like life is meaningless, and uh, mm-hmm. that's kind of like one common point. It's like everybody feels like life is meaningless, and like the people on our side are like, okay, we got to do something about this. And the people on the left are like, like actually, it's kind of awesome, you know, like you know, the, we have Netflix. Is, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is great. Um, and you know, another Roy, that's one Rorschach test. Like, do you like do you want to do something about this? Are you satisfied with modern life? And another another the, another one is um. Do you believe that there is an active hot war against masculinity going on in society right now? Mm-hmm. And uh, the obvious answer to that for me is yes. And I think basically everyone on our side, tradcasts and Nietzscheans alike, and many other uh, of the various from, from, weird, well, apart weird from like identities. weird, like hyperborean feminist Kaliak people, like the, yeah, like even <laughs> like Wignats, like tradcasts, trad orthos, and Nietzscheans, like everyone agrees, yeah, masculinity is like the number one. Well, not the only number one target, but like one it, of the. It doesn't. It's not about whether it's number one. It's just about is there a war on masculinity? And the yeah. answer is obviously yes. <laughs> and if you're yeah. gonna if you're gonna go and deny that, uh, you're not on our side. <laughs> like that's how I see it. Like you know, it's just that's that's you can divide the world into those two camps right now. 
right this um th this this will this will hook back i think to a topic that you wanted to talk to but related to what you know will's talking about right now which is um you know part of what uh, being a catholic is right is wrestling with natural order um yes yes and, and, and that natural order um whether it's the flow of grace or the flow of uh, uh the, the natural world right this particular like vital energy is moving and so back to chastity and stuff like that there's this great uh deacon who's been writing a little bit about eros in worship like in in the religious experience um mm. and that type of love um but it's a it's about negotiating um you know, those vital energies, you know, uh, uh, within yourself and as, as Will saying, steering them towards, uh, God, right back, back to what we were talking about before, um, the, uh, all of creation singing to the glory of God. Right. So if I can successfully order my vital energies towards him, you know, towards God, um, and, and, and that, and that great order, mm -hmm. then I, then my whole being kind of hums in this harmony. That's very, very, if I'm a man, that's very, very masculine. Right. And, yeah. and so if it's disordered and it's all chopped up and I, you know, just seek its uh, uh, fulfillment and all the various places in the world, I'm thinking of like Augustine walking around, you know, the woods or, you know, going to all these different people and places to kind of like satisfy this desire to know God. Um, right. And that's like really, so your vital energy, you know, you're just whatever you're eager on it up or whatever you're doing, right. You're just like totally not, um, you're not channeling that into an order that will, that, that, that brings fruit. You're like, yes, you're like pouring yourself out into the world and, and the world is like forsaking you. Um, and in that it, you're like, you're not connecting with life. And, and so back to that Annie Natalist type of discussion that you were looking to have is that, mm -hmm. you know, all of that, um, that, 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 you know, hyper pursuit of pleasure, um, over, a pursuit of virtue and divine errors and like yes, a, a yes. feel like living within the flow of the vital energy that orders the universe. Um, you know, that that's what life is, you know, that's where life comes from, right? When 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 you um uh, codify it, you know, when when you when you work it into a marriage and a relationship with a woman, you know, babies pour out of it, you know. Yeah. Um, that's that this is the way it works you know um and so um you know babies don't pour out of you just like satisfying yourself wherever and whenever you know um mm -hmm. so so this is uh you know this would be my this is where i would connect with like you know i think again i'm, I'm with you guys right the nietzsche and vitalists or you know the, the all the other like kind of rather esoteric um things that float around on the internet i think they can we can have this conversation about like, you know, natural order and vital energy and really connect it with, with, with what Catholicism has to offer people. Which right. Is, right. Is and then I think in all fairness, there is like, a, I think a fundamental, we have to reconcile the fact that there is a disagreement between the sort of like Bapian vitalist pirate lifestyle and being a family man. I mean, that's just, one, one, one hundred right. you know, it's like, and, and I might, I might like, you know, again, I'm not, this isn't like to side up anything, but, um, you know, I, I think as a Catholic, I can understand the glory or happiness of a death on the battlefield, you know? Right, right, but, right. But, you know, to, 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 th th that's like momentary where the glory of like, you know, as Catholics, right, we pray for a happy death. Right. And so like, I, 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 I see that happy death more surrounded by like a giant family on a mm. piece of, on, on knowing that I'm passing on a heritage to my children, um, knowing, knowing that I'm passing on land mm -hmm. and, and knowing that I'm passing on values and structures and, and a type of base and true understanding of the world that will carry not only them, but their generation. Thank you everyone for listening to the content minded podcast. If you wish to support me, and to unlock every full and uncensored version of each week's podcast, please go to patreon.com slash Productions. You will not only get every full and uncensored version of Content Minded, but you will also get exclusive content, such as my Giner Reviews series, where I analyze and pick apart various interesting and insightful books or essays. 
every episode will be uploaded to Anchor, which will upload them to Spotify, as well as my backup channel on Odyssey. Please look out for new content every single week, and please look out for The Digital Archipelago with me and The Prudentialist. Thank you once again to all of my beautiful patrons. Thank you all for keeping the content renaissance alive. As I always say, God bless and goodbye.